Welcome to episode 68 of One on One with Mitch LaFon. I'm your host, Mitch LaFon. This week, talking with Henrik Klangenberg of Sonata Artica, talking about, of course, their new album, Pariah's Child, the re-recorded El Ecliptica 15th Anniversary Edition, and, of course, uh, their current tour in North America. Joining me this week, once again, is Talking Metal's Mark Striegel. Good day, sir. Hey, Mitch. How are you? Well, you know, listen, I, I, I've been better. I've got a little touch of a cold, but nothing will keep me from delivering the rock and roll, right? So that's uh, got to keep going. Right on, right on. We have an uh, interesting uh, guest today, but mostly to me, he's interesting because of the instrument he plays. Right. He, he plays the guitar. Now, I was first introduced to the guitar um, when, my, my, when my daughter was like two years old, and she was watching a show on TV called The Doodle Bops. So whenever I hear of Kitar, I think of this Disney character uh, playing away. But uh, it seems to be all the rage with these uh, Scandinavian metal bands. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, when we were at Heavy Montreal, Epica, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, I guess they're kind of progressive, but I don't know what you call it, symphonic female fronted metal band they of course had a a a guitar player so i mean in a lot of ways they were these instruments were very cool back in the 1980s and then i feel like they fell out of fashion for probably most of the 90s and maybe even the first decade of the 2000s but i'm seeing a lot of them come back in in fashion and uh, come back into the uh the lineup of a lot of, of a lot of different metal bands yeah, you know, for for years, metal was no no keyboards. You know, there's no keyboards in metal, right? You, you would listen right. to bands like Megadeth or Metallica, and they'd say, "No keyboards here." And uh, the Europeans, though, always seem to embrace it, going all the way back to Europe and uh, and Gothard and all these other bands. They they seem to love the keyboard, and it seems to sort of be a a staple in the European metal machine. Don't know why, but there it is. You know, are you a big Sonata Artica fan? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a big fan. I, I appreciate what they do, but mm-hmm. not not a not a big fan. Not a big fan simply because I'm just not super knowledgeable on what they're all about. But I, you know, look forward to hearing this interview and definitely want to check out more of their material. Yeah, you know, and what's funny about these bands now is every time we start interviewing these heavy metal bands, because sometimes we do other stuff like Steve Hackett and stuff. I start thinking, okay, are these guys heavy Montreal worthy? Is this guy heavy? And, uh, you know, listen, I've been checking out Sonata Artica, and I've seen him before in, um, uh, I think it was the Medley in Montreal and other smaller clubs. Um, I think that these guys could be heavy Montreal worthy someday. So, hey, you know, uh, why don't we sit back and listen to Henrik Kleingenberg, who plays the guitar, much like that lady in the doodle bobs that my daughter used to like. Here's Henrik. Hello, Mitch. This is Henrik from Sonic How are you doing? I'm doing well, Henrik. Uh, pleasure to speak with you. Uh, so much to talk about with your uh, with the band, with its 15-year uh, career and, and so on. So, All right. Let's, uh, let's get started. Um, boy, uh, tell me a little bit about the, the, the 15 years. Uh, you're on the 15th anniversary tour. What's sort of been the secret to your success to last so long? Well, I mean, uh, we've been uh, fairly consistent, I would say, and and, uh, and just hard work, man, I think. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we have had some member changes over the years, so uh, not everybody can last this long. <laughs> but I think, I mean, we've been lucky, and uh, we just try to work as hard as possible, and, and that seems to be paying off. Yeah, now, uh, earlier this year, you released... Pariah's Child, and um, from what I understand, before you were preparing for this uh, album, you had already started thinking about the 15th anniversary tour, and as you started playing some of the older material, it sort of inspired what happened on Pariah's Child. In fact, bringing back the wolf imagery and all that stuff, too. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, there was a lot, of, a lot going on. On at that time, and of course, yeah, we were thinking about the 15th anniversary and how we want to do it, and and that also led us to to 
go back and check a little bit how the band started and uh, we realized that some of the influences that uh, originally were there have been will be fading away so we wanted to bring bring back some of the old stuff and uh, and redirect our course a little bit. Yeah, you know, uh, the other the other exciting news is the re-recorded Elliptica 15th anniversary edition that comes out uh, in October or later this month. Um, yeah, tell me a little bit about that project. So, from what I understand, the Japanese label came to you and said, "Would you want to record re-record this album?" Um, yeah. Why did they want yeah. that, and why were you open to that suggestion? Well, I mean, at first we weren't that open to that suggestion. We were like, what the hell, you know? <laughs> we already done that album once, and uh, right. it, it, it first didn't, didn't really make sense. But uh, uh, then uh, we thought about it, and, and of course it turns out that only Tony and Tommy, drummer and, uh, and vocalist, are the only guys who are on the original one. Right. And uh, so we thought, you know, why not? The song's so good, and we've been playing in live as well, so... Um, so we decided to give it a shot and we didn't really rearrange the songs all that much or anything so so it was just something you know, that we thought that it could be a fun project to do over the summer like when we're back home in between festivals and stuff so um, so it was I mean it was a fun project and uh, it was fairly easy for us to do because we could record all the stuff at home except for the drums and, and I decided to give it, give it a go, and I think it turned out pretty well. But of course, you know, we're not trying to rewrite history or anything. So, so it should be seen as that as project, and uh, might be, have some interest for some people, and some people might not be that interested. So. Well, uh, hopefully, a lot of people will be interested. But when you go back and re record an album like that, why not make some changes? Why try to be as close to the original as possible? Well, it was mainly a time issue, and uh, since we were touring already, uh, we just had to, to record the parts uh, back home, and there was really no time to, to rehearse the songs with the band. And, and that's why uh, the main difference are, are just on the production values and, and, and the sounds and stuff like that. When you're going back and you're listening to the songs for this re-record, um, are, are there any things that you hear in the original album that bothered you and you go, oof, I really got to fix that, whatever, <laughs> guitar bend or that drum fill? Or was it pretty much, yeah, hey, I like it the way it is? Uh, well, for me, it was I pretty much like it the way it is because I didn't play in the original. So there's some Cuban stuff that I did change it. Right. A little bit, but I know uh, that at least uh, Tony and uh, with his singing, there was there was a lot of stuff that he, he didn't like on the original one, like uh, pronunciation and uh, and things things like that that he wanted to do do again. So I think uh, he's more happy with the new one. But uh, uh, I think um, since, of course, it was it was originally our first album. And it was a really important one for us. It just basically put us on the map. So, right. um, so I, I think it's a great one. I mean, the first one is a great album, and this is just like an updated version of it. And of course, the just some uh, some like uh, youthful craziness on the on the first album that I don't think you can reproduce anymore at this age. So, <laughs> so um, that, that's why I think this album more or less like complement each other instead of uh, trying to replace one with the other. Yeah, how do how do the new members affect the sound of this re-release? Well, I think I mean we we did honor the songs quite a lot, but I, I think it's uh, you find that the, the sound of the, the guitar, bass, and the keyboards it, it's quite different from the original one. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. You you do the song "I Can't Dance," a, a Genesis cover as as I guess as a bonus track. Um, yeah. How did you decide on a Genesis song? Well, this was actually um, this version of the song was something that we recorded when uh, when we did a previous album, Stones Go Over Name. Right. Uh, during those sessions, we did a we did a cover of of Dark and Dance, I and mean, we usually try to make covers of songs that are not heavy metal because then it, uh, it it's, uh, I think it open up to, opens up more possibilities and also changes the song more drastically. Uh, and so we recorded that, and then now when we switched bass players, a uh, new bass player just recorded his bass and then mixed, uh, mixed the thing, and finally we'll find a, a place to put it out on. I mean, we 
they didn't really know when or how to release it back when back, uh, the, the stones go remain there. So it was something that we had in the world for a while. Yeah. Now, uh, having done this version of the of the album, are there any other albums you look back on, like Silence or Reckoning Night or or Unia, that you go, "Hey, we'd like to re-record that one too." Uh, no, I don't. I mean, I think uh, it was a, like I said, it was a fun project to do once, but I don't think uh, I don't think that's a habit that we're going to pick up because uh, we have a lot of new music. Uh, all the time, so I, I prefer to do new songs instead of doing old ones. So I think this was one off, and uh, and and I don't think we're gonna we record any other albums. At, at least not the whole album. Not the whole album. Um, Pariah's Child came out earlier this year. You're you're currently on tour, and it 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 ends at least for the winter season in December. What are the plans going forward in 2015? Well, it's going to be more of more touring. I mean, we're still going to play some shows in, in Finland. Then we're going to uh, uh, South America for I think four weeks or something like that. Uh, we still haven't gone to Japan with this album. And then it's like over the summer, summer festivals in Europe, in Finland. And then after that, like next fall, at like the earliest, we start to work on the next one. Okay, and um, also over the years in the live show and even on album, uh, and we were talking about covers just a second ago, you've done a, a bunch of covers from X Japan to Gary Moore to Metallica to Kiss to Iron Maiden. Have you ever thought of putting together a um, CD of cover songs? Well, not really. I mean, it's it's something like like for me personally, it's it's. I think it's fun to do. You know, you do one cover or two covers when you, while you record an album, just for the hell of it. But but I'm more interested in in, in doing original music, to be honest. So yeah. uh, we we never talked about it. Well, of course, that's an option to do a cover album. But but at the moment, I don't think that's something that that we can do. Yeah. Uh, and then let me ask you this: the um like we said before also the band's been around 15 years coming from finland and then coming over to america and going like you just said to, to japan and stuff any particular challenges was it was it difficult to break out of just being a finnish band to, to be more of an international artist um well yes and no i mean the thing was uh, uh back before when i was in the band the guy um, the guys got the uh, got the chance to support strike wires in europe right and uh um and that pretty much put them on the map in in, in Europe already. Uh, and then after that, they supported Gamma Ray as well. So so uh, like getting into the European scene was not uh, not like crazy difficult, so to speak. But then uh, even after that, I was in the band for a couple of years, and we we came over to the states in two thousand and five for the first time. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it's a hard market, and especially the, this kind of music. It's uh, you know you, you got to put a lot of work in it. I think this is our ninth uh, U.S. tour at the moment. So, yeah. so I mean, yeah, it, it was a bit hard, uh, and it still is. But I think you know if you just uh, give what you got, and you see where the chips where the chips fall, and see how it turns out. Has the band ever considered changing their sound at all to appeal more to an American market? Have you thought, well, let's make it more like Metallica, where it's sort of melodic metal, or have you just said, listen, this is what we do, and that's all, folks? No, it's yeah. I mean, for us, it's, it, it starts with with only songwriting, and then uh, get together and and, and start, to, and it starts to sound like some Antarctica. And I, I think uh, for us, it's important to to be the kind of band that we are and, and whatever changes in sound or style and, and things that happen should be by accident or by, you know, by by doing stuff the way we feel uh, feel towards them at the moment as opposed to, to making the conscious uh, decision to change it into something else. So uh, I don't think, you know, if, if you're not honest to yourself, it's just going to sound phony. So so we, we haven't thought about uh, doing a change to doing any kind of certain kind of audience, yeah. Uh, and then finally, uh, I'm out in Montreal. The band's been here a bunch of times. Any particular memories or, or feelings about coming to the province of Quebec or Montreal in particular? Uh, well, that was actually one of the first places that, that we did really well in. Yeah. Uh, in Canada. Yeah. I mean, um, back in 2005, when we first came over, 
uh, who was supposed to support Nightwish, and then ca- they uh, canceled the tour. So, of course, we were devastated, like, okay, we never get to go to America, but, um, but our agent uh, booked, like, like uh, two weeks' worth of shows, and the biggest ones were in Montreal and Quebec. So, um, yeah, with a, yeah, with a guy named, uh, I guess, Stephen Malul over at Brave Concerts, w- would probably be the first guy who brought you over. Uh, a, yeah. A great think, organization. Uh, yeah, it is, and uh, it, it's always been good for us out there. So I think that's that's uh, that's the um, place we stay on every tour. When we go there, we know it's going to be a good crowd, and we're going to have a good time. So it's it's really it's been good for us. It really has been. Um, anything else that we'd like to cover? Well, not really. I mean, we're on the end of a seven-week tour. We're going to go home in a few days. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, t- it's time to take a nap, right? Yeah, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> hey, Henrik, it, 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 it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for being patient, and uh, I look forward to the next time you get back to Montreal. Yeah, well, that's nice talking to you, too. All right. Have Take a good care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. And there you have it, folks. That was my interview with Henrik of Sonata Artica. And, of course, check out their new, well, their new, old, re-recorded, Ecliptica 15th Anniversary Edition. Um, you know, great stuff. And uh, always a pleasure to, to speak to uh, to the guys in Sonata. Um, Definitely. Bef- before we leave, Mark, I've got a couple of sort of hot rumors that I wanted to throw at you and, and, and okay. get your opinion on. First one is pretty simple. Uh, rumor has it that Van Halen have a new album on the way, that it is currently in the mixing stages, and that the band is heading out on a world tour in 2015. So the obvious question is, first of all, have you heard anything with your contacts and, and the sphere of people you deal with, or is this sort of new information? Uh, well, I mean, I've read it online. I, mm-hmm. I, what I what I read, you know, was you know, I had actually like three people send me a link to it, saying that Van Halen was in the studio, and then the very next day, I got uh, a link from like two other people saying that they definitely weren't in the studio. You know, some article saying that that was not true, and I believe it was the Van Halen fan site. The news desk. Uh, news desk, yeah, that said that that right. wasn't true. So I, I don't know. Um, what, what are your thoughts on it? I, I mean, I, I would love to hear new material from, from Van Halen. And there's, there's also another thing in the mix here, too, um, which I want to hear what you think about the new album. But Sammy, of course, I'm sure you know this, throwing it out there that he believes Michael Anthony should be back in Van Halen. And I think even went as far as saying that he wouldn't be surprised if it happens. Well, you know, uh, let me cover all the Van Halen bases on this one. Then I wouldn't be surprised if Michael Anthony went back. Uh, I know that Wolfgang seems to be uh, very much ensconced into the whole Tremonti uh, band situation. Right. And listen, it's a younger band, and he's a younger guy. Uh, I sort of don't blame him if he, he, he says to Dad, listen, Eddie, I got to go do my own thing. So I, that wouldn't be a surprise. And I think if Van Halen does tour in 2015, it would be somewhat silly to bring in a new bass player. Uh, bringing back Michael would be the only sort of logical thing to do. It just it, it just wouldn't make sense to have, you know, Kid X come in and play bass. So Right. Well, and we know from previous interviews, uh, there was an interview that Roth did with Rolling Stone probably within the last two years where he said he would love to have Michael back in, in the band. He didn't say it quite that direct, but he said that those high harmony, you know, that mm-hmm. high tenor, voice is missing and he uh, and, I agree. you know yeah i agree and you know how many more kicks at the can do bands like van halen kiss and all that have uh getting michael back would be a proper reunion and would of course mean a lot more money um yeah. now as far as the new album i've heard the same rumors that they've recorded a new album and it's getting mixed and it's ready to go and of course the van halen news desk promptly denied that but listen the van halen news desk 
uh, is sort of your direct conduit to the band. So they sort of got to toe the company line. But I could say this, they could both be right. Uh, if you go back to the uh, a different kind of truth uh, days, uh, rumor then, or it was suggested then, that two albums worth of music were recorded and that the next set of 10 or 12 songs would be released when deemed appropriate. So we could have a new album being mixed right now without the band having gone into the studio. So the possibility of new Van Halen music or previously unreleased Van Halen music coming to light in 2015 um, could bear out. And both Van Halen News Desk and, and anybody else reporting otherwise could both be right. So right. We'll, right. we'll see about that. And of course, you mentioned Michael Anthony, the other great rumor that I heard in the Van Halen world. And, and this one is going to b- blow your mind. It, and who knows how true it can be, that Sammy Hager, Michael Anthony, along with Jason Bonham and Jimmy Page uh, are going to get together to record an album. Yeah. Um, listen, if that happens, it could certainly be interesting. I mean, you've got great players all around. Jason Bonham, of course, officially has quit from California Breed, uh, the Glenn Hughes fronted band. So he's free. And yeah. Mikey's free, and Sammy's free, and well, Jimmy, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but has Jimmy recorded anything in the last decade? I mean, even as a guest spot anywhere? I think he's... I, I don't I don't think so. I mean, it could actually be going on two decades, really, since yeah, that well, walking into Clark's, Clarksdale or whatever the hell that was, right, with uh, Plant and Page. Uh, I well, mean, of course, there was... That was, that? That was, was 90, uh, 95, 95, 90. 96. I mean... Yeah, he's been sitting yeah, in a log cabin sense. somewhere for, for... Actually, he also did a, a tour with... Cover, well, he did the tour with Covered. Anyway. That was before he right, got back right. together with Plant. But that's right, yeah, that's right, that's right. yeah, he was uh, recently... I mean, here's the power of Jimmy Page. He, he recently did a book signing last week in New York City. And he. when I say book signing, that's not even correct. Because all he did was open the book and stamp it. He didn't sign it and there were no, fo- no photographs allowed. And I was like, oh, well, you know, F this. I'm not going to go to that. But as, as it approached, I was like, you know, but it's Jimmy Page. I have to go to right. it. So at 10 a.m., I went, in, went into the city a little early, went downtown to where this book signing was, was going to be that evening. No, no, the you book ha- stamping. The book stamping, right. <laughs> you had to pick up a, uh, a bracelet at, at, in the morning and then come back in the evening at 7 p.m. for the book signing. So I got down there, uh, and, they were, and he was only going to do 250 people. So only t- 250 stamps were going to be given out. So I got down there you know, at like 9.45, thinking I'd quickly run in and grab a bracelet and then head up to work. Not the case. The line stretched two New York City blocks, and, wow. and it was just unbelievable. There had to be... 500 people in the line and i'm sure a lot of those people never got their their bracelet or their book stamp no. and I, I just gave up i said you know what i can't i have to be at work at 10 so can't compete I, with this yeah i i, I didn't I, I didn't uh, go to the book or book stamping that evening but i there were tons of people there and just the diehards you know the zeppelin tattoos and t-shirts and you know just the wackadoodles, if you will, but uh, yeah, it was it was uh, something else. So Jimmy Page, just such such power. I mean, after the Beatles, I really think it's Zeppelin as far as rock royalty go. You know? Yeah. Well, listen, there's there's some rock royalty out there. Your, your Sabbath and your Kiss and your Aerosmith, but yeah, Led Zeppelin is yeah is, is I, the one. They're, they're, they changed the genre in in the eyes of the the mainstream, at least. You know. Yeah, and you know, the other thing with a Page is that he, he had a hand in, in the Led Zeppelin remasters that have recently come out. So, you know, maybe him and uh, Jason getting together, working with Sammy and Michael could be true. I mean, you know, yeah. maybe they want to get some stuff and promote. So who knows? There's, there's just a, a lot of interesting stuff going in and around the Van Halen camp. And, of course, the question is, if... Van Halen with David, with or without Michael, are touring next year. Are they heavy Montreal worthy? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I also am scratching my head over the Glenn Hughes, Jason Bonham parting because those guys just seem so tight to me. I even had the opportunity to meet Jason Bonham about a year and a half, two years ago. And I, I, you know, was talking to him about Glenn Hughes, um, off the record, not in an interview. And he just seemed like he was so tight with that guy and, you know, was so upset with Joe for not being able to tour with mm -hmm. black country communion. And, uh, he, uh, he just seemed so tight with the guy and the, the most recent interview with Glenn this week, it sounds like there was really a, uh, a parting there and, and that Glenn actually kind of came off as sounding a little ticked off about the whole thing. Yeah, it could be. But you know, at the end of the day, if, uh, it could lead uh, lend credence to the rumor of the Hager Anthony Page thing because if I was Jason Bonham and I said, "Well, you can go play some clubs with Glenn Hughes, or you could drum with Sammy Hager and Jimmy Page," I would go, "Hmm, yeah, all right. Well, see you later, Glenn." You know, right. no offense to Glenn, but I think the opportunity is bigger and better with Jimmy. So we'll see. 2015 uh, certainly an interesting year. If they have Michael Anthony in the band, I think that they are a heavy Montreal headliner, uh, bar none. For sure. And, and, of course, other festivals, whether it's Download or Hellfest or whatever. Uh, without Michael Anthony, um, you know, I'm not sure if they're a headliner. They might be the band that opens for Metallica on a festival date if, if they don't have... Um, you know, if they have Wolfgang, and and I, and I don't mean to insult Wolfgang. That's that's not my point. I just think that it's not as exciting as if you had the four guys. Yep, I agree. I you agree. Know? So there you go. Um, well, there we go. Uh, remember, head over to iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, TuneIn, and and quickly speaking of uh, Stitcher, uh, Deezer bought yeah, Stitcher, I heard that. which is a kind of exciting. A uh, Nice streaming uh, service. And yes. now uh, they have, since we're both on Stitcher, they have Talking Metal one-on-one -on -one and, of course, Metal Raps. So, uh, folks, if, if you don't get us through these uh, podcast apps, definitely sign up for Deezer and uh, look for us. Uh, I looked recently. Uh, the sh podcasts in general are not there yet, but I'm sure that since they bought it, it'll be there within the next month two months i mean yeah i'm sure they didn't buy it to kill it they yeah absolutely you don't buy thirty five thousand shows of content to just kill it <laughs> definitely not definitely not so there you go good thank, stuff thank you mark yeah, good talking with you remember to talk check out talking metal digital guys talking metal digital dot com check mm -hmm. out all our podcasts there and show your support with a PayPal donation to Mitch. His PayPal account is MitchMinute at AOL.com. Yes. Thanks a lot. Of course. And remember, check out our other show with Mitch Joel called Metal Raps, where we talk about recent rock events and, of course, all the happenings on Talking Metal and, of course, one-on-one -on -one with me, Mitch LaFont. Thank you, folks. <laughs>